Mike Aguirre to the conversation. He's joining now to discuss the possible potential rate hikes. He is the attorney of well-renowned around here. Mr. Aguirre, I didn't know I was going to have this great honor to speak to you, Mike. Oh, did you did you refer to me as Mark? Yeah, well, you know here? what? You get what you pay for. No, no, because you, you, I guess you must have seen me out on the basketball court. <laughs> ah, <laughs> from former DePaul star, right? Yes. Hey, uh, oh my gosh, Mike. Yes. Well, good morning. Good morning. I will let you. Uh, I will let you react to um, Ed's live shot, and then we'll pick it up from there. Okay. All right. Take it away. What? What? What do you? All right. Here, here's here's what people need to understand. There is no meaningful regulation of the prices and the rates that sdg and charges. Our city council is dominated by campaign contributions and lobbyists from sdg and &E. uh, sdg &E, uh, spends millions of dollars on campaign contributions to the governor uh, in lobbying. And so they basically have neutralized uh, any regulation. I, you know, I've been involved in investigating this for you know, 20 years. And this is what the reality is. And what people have to understand is it's not a question of a fair return. There's a reason why SDG&E stock is at $100 a share, or a SEMPRA stock's at 100 and PG&E is at 15 And that's because SDG&E has done by far the best job of bamboozling the people of San Diego about these rate hikes. One quick, one quick point. Uh, SDG &E, uh, when they applied for this uh, in as late as 2022, they said they were they were going to need about 500 million dollars to buy electricity. Now in October, that went up to 800 million dollars, and no real explanation. And so what what we need to realize is that massive amounts of wealth of our beautiful, lovely San Diego from elderly people that can't afford it. That wealth is being transferred out of our community to the biggest, most powerful institutional investors in the world. Who they, that's who owns the Sempra stock. And so that's what's really going on. And uh, we so appreciate just being able to have an opportunity to get that message out to folks because, you know, uh, Paul, you're going to be able to afford your, your, your rate hikes. And, and most of the people that we know are. But it is crushing when you are struggling to find enough uh, money to pay the family uh, food bill and, and you're having to go to something like Feed San Diego just to get enough to, to enough groceries. And then you get these bills that go from 50 to $220 a month and you realize it's greed, 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 and it's bamboozling, it's misinformation. And then what happens is SDG&E takes some of the wealth that they I won't say steal, but but inappropriately take out of our community. And then they spread it around. They give it to certain charities. They give it to certain interest groups uh, like the chamber. And then what happens at these so-called meetings like this one they're going to be tonight? They all come in and say, oh, yes, we want more for sdg &E because they're getting to benefit. They get a few pennies. The thing that people have to understand tonight, these public participation meetings mean nothing. They're zero. They're not even part of the record. They're just a public relations opportunity for sdg &E to try to bamboozle the public even more. But Mike, don't we don't we walk a fine line here? Because you know we were supposed to be a capitalistic society. When we have government setting what your profit line can be, is that problematic in your view, or what? What is the oh, solution? Oh no, this in your is view? socialism. This this is they control the government. See, they control the regulators. This is socialism. This is corporate socialism. I, hey, I agree with you. I would like to see competition. I would like to see sdg &E's monopoly broken up into smaller areas so that uh, our, our uh, capitalistic system could take, take hold. I agree with you 100%. This is the problem. We're not using capitalism. We're not using free markets. This is monopoly. And you, but you put your finger right on it, Paul. As usual, Paul, you put your finger right on the key issue. Well, so then what is the solution? I mean, we, we, we need another company with initials. We need to break up the, you know, reorganize the territories of these companies and make it possible for more companies to come into the business, the transmission lines, which we have paid for. So it's, it's, not, it's not like it's their private property. The ratepayers have actually paid for all these transmission lines. We have to figure out a way to create a capitalistic 
free market comp a competitive system so that we have companies competing with each other for customers. Similar to uh, what we did with the it, phone companies? Well, I mean, to some degree, that's true. I mean, I mean, I, I think that people would have to recognize there's a lot more competition with phones, with cars, with furniture, uh, even with groceries. Uh, you know, there's I mean, our, our, you know, our system works. You, if you let capitalism and free markets uh, come into play, that works and that works very efficiently. When you charge more for a product or a service like electricity, that's what's and, and, and you charge more than what really it's necessary. That's called the loss of consumer surplus. That consumer surplus, that extra money that goes there, that could go to another business. That could go to financing for uh, you know further economic uh, development of our of our markets here in San Diego, but that is it's irrational and even the most conservative economists they, to a person agree that consumer surplus should not be tolerated and that's again I want to come back you know we have the we have we're so laid back at San Diego that we are the most bamboozled of all of the uh, electric customers, electricity customers. We are the most bamboozled by our utility. We are the most exploited. We have the highest rates. We have high, we have double and triple the rates of other cities of our size. By we, we have the we have the highest rates of any community in the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. And that has got to stop. And we've got to we've got to figure out a way to constructively transition into uh, so that we we are not exploited like this every day of our lives. Mike, I wish you could read some of the mail I, I get from folks that are living in, uh, you know, a dilapidated uh, mobile home with they can't they have to make the choice between heat or eat, and uh, it's gut wrenching. And and all I see is it getting worse that that the gap of people trying to make it here in, in California. And I, at Paul, some point, get, the worm's got to turn, right? Paul, I get those calls every day. I, it, you know, they, people call me, they say, Mike, can we do something? Can you, can you, you know, I had, I had, uh, you know, uh, folks that, that, you know, they, like you said, they, cho they choose between getting medicine and they get paying the electricity bill. And, you know, the, the problem is that when you go to the CPUC, uh, every one of the commissioners has to get the approval of the utility to get appointed. Uh, people like Newsom, I mean, don't, get, don't be offended by this, but I am a Democrat, I'm a proud Democrat, but I am ashamed of the Democratic Party. I'm ashamed of how they have allowed the CPUC to become a lapdog of the utilities. And it's, it's, it's you know, all these so-called justifications. You know, <clears throat> one of the things that the folks for public power, which is another option, one of the things the folks from public power say is, hey, uh, you know, your SDG was supposed to come in and explain the rates. And SDG says, oh, we don't set our rates. The PUC does. That is not true. The, the, the uh, SDG prepares a request for a rate. They call it a budget. It's really a, 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 a dream of, of all uh, the impossible dream. Uh, kinds of ex uh, increases, Mike. And, we got to. We got to. We're, we're running out of time, Mike. We got. We. Are up I was just getting. Paul, that was just the introduction. I know. I know. <laughs> I, I apologize, but we have uh, Jane King on the on the line here. So, uh, part, right. part two of our conversation next time we meet. All right, my brother. Thanks so much. All right.